Welcome to SMLP Tech. I'm Phil GB and this is my video on how to install Home Assistant on TrueNAS scale with USB pass-through for your Combi or Sonoff Zigbee stick. I've simplified the steps down as best I can. When I first set out to do this myself, it took me some time to try and find good guide online to how to get it working. A lot of the guides were simply explaining that you can't do USB pass-through for a jail install of Home Assistant. But what I wanted was to run Home Assistant supervised straight from my TrueNAS server with my USB Zigbee stick connected to it. So after having a good look around the internet, I figured out how to do it. And here is my video sharing how you could do it too. I've broken it down into simplified steps. I've tried to make the video as short as possible. So as we go through, everything is running at full speed on screen. And obviously I have the full steps down in the description and on my website. So the first step is fairly straightforward. We're gonna download Debian 11 onto our local computer and then set up a new VM on TrueNAS using the downloaded operating system. Once you've got it downloaded, simply go into virtualization, create a new virtual machine and set it up the way you normally would. For me, I've used four gigabytes worth of memory and 250 gigabyte storage, obviously, four gigabyte is overkill for home assistant it can quite happily run on two gigabyte also you could probably get away with a lower storage amount but i always think if you've got the storage use it don't mess about too much with any of the settings then you just simply select the downloaded iso file for the debian install upload it to the server click on add a gpu if you've got one and then install boot the vm click into display and then install for the install of the VM, everything is pretty much standard. Just get it done. Make sure you've got good passwords set up. One of the problems I came across is I tried to pick a UK based mirror for the install, brightmark.co.uk. The only problem was on my first attempt, their site kept timing out, which was a bit of a headache. So it's just something to bear in mind. I obviously just switched to the standard Debian mirror site. When it comes to installing extra software, what I actually do is I remove the GNOME and Debian desktop environment because it's not needed and make sure that you do add the SSH server so that you can get easy access once the install's completed. Once the install's completed, shut it down, go to devices and you need to remove the CD-ROM from your devices menu where your installation media was. Then boot into Debian. The next step is a bit of a known problem with the OS when using it on TrueNAS scale. So what we're gonna do for now is just exit the shell, go to boot maintenance manager, boot from file, go to the EFI, choose Debian, choose Grub64 EFI and boot into the OS. Next, we're gonna go into super user and install sudo. The reason I do this is because a lot of the time when you're following guides online they often use the sudo command and the base Debian 11 install doesn't have this included. So install it, add yourself as a user. The next step, get your IP address, SSH into the server. This just makes it a little bit easier for future commands that we're going to run. Before we do that however, we need to fix the problem with the boot from the BIOS in the VM make the new directory and move the EFI file to the right place with the right name. Also, we don't want to be messing about too much with networking. So use nano, go into the network interfaces, comment out all the sections, save it, come back out and then install network manager. Shut down the system, check it boots without any intervention from you. At this point, I would recommend to clone the system not for any other reason than you've now got a nice fresh install Obdevian that boots without any issues before you start messing about with it and it's handy if you want to do something else in the future. So next step, SSH into your new server and we need to install Docker. Make sure all your apps are up to date, install the dependencies and then install Docker. Obviously all the commands for this are in the description of the video. Check to make sure Docker's working correctly. 
the next step we want to make sure that the commands that I've got in the video are the correct ones. So first of all, you need to go to the Home Assistant website and check for the latest version to make sure the version numbers are correct. Then install Home Assistant using the correct version number. Once that's complete, that's Home Assistant up and running. Next, we need to make sure that TrueNAS is allowing the Home Assistant VM access to your USB devices. To do this, go to TrueNAS, go into the shell and run LSPCI. This will give you a list of devices connected to the system. Notice the ones that say USB controller. To the left of that gives you the reference for each USB controller. Make a note of that and then exit out of the shell. Next, go back to your virtual machine, making sure that it's not currently running. Add a new device. You want PCI pass-through device and then look for the same reference number corresponding to the USB controller you saw from the shell. This is a bit of trial and error. What I did is picked one, plugged in the USB, check to see if it worked. If it didn't, you can close down the virtual machine, delete the device, and then do it again using one of the different reference numbers until Home Assistant recognizes your USB combi stick or Sonoff stick. And then that's essentially it. It does take some time for Home Assistant to fully load in the background, can be up to around 20 minutes or longer if you're running on slower hardware. Just be patient. Just remember, each time you clone the VM, you'll end up with a different IP address for the system. The easiest way to combat this is go into the display, find out the IP address, then go to your local router and set a static IP address from your local router so that whenever the system boots, it's always issued with the same IP address. This will just save you messing around further down the line. Hope that helped. If there's anything in this video you think I can improve on, let me know. I have links to the places where I got the information from on my website. Links in the description. Thank you very much for watching.